Hey guys, welcome to Ryan's Running Reviews. I'll save you all some time and give you a quick rundown. Provision 7 is very similar to its predecessor, midsole, exactly the same, outsole, same as well. However, the entire upper has been completely redesigned and we do go down about half an ounce. So uh, yeah, let's get into the details. Here we go. Before we begin, I do want to say if these shoes were provided to me by Roadrunner Sports, however, they didn't have a chance to preview this video, and this final synopsis is my own. I'd also like to say please leave a like on the video and consider subscribing. Here we go. The Ultra Provision 7 is a mid cushion stability shoe that just makes basically an upper update to the Provision 6, which I'll bring in here. You can see they look very similar, and we'll get into the exact details of how it changed. But I will say the Provision 6 is my wife's favorite shoe. She works in healthcare, she's on her feet all day, and she has two pairs of these. And I also gave a pair to my mom, and she absolutely loves them. Them as well. So the Provision is a very popular shoe in my family and in the general public as well as I think this is one of Ultra's best selling shoes. So all that being said, this is also a very versatile shoe as well. So it works well for running, but it's also a nice shoe for weightlifting, sports, and a whole host of other activities. I've actually taken it hiking as well because I forgot my hiking shoes and I hiked in the Provision um, and it worked quite well. So this shoe I think is a great option for all around use and not just running because it is such kind of a well balanced uh, shoe because of that zero drop wide forefoot great tread on the outsole and a very stable midsole. And if you're not familiar with Ultra, they definitely do things differently. They have a balanced shoe or a zero drop shoe where the heel is level with the forefoot. So most other shoes have a little bit more in the heel for anywhere between a five to 12 millimeter drop, depending on the brand Ultra, all their shoes have a zero drop from heel to toe. So you're basically kind of like a uh, barefoot stance, perfectly flat, or as they call it balanced. And the other thing is they have this wide toe box, which allow your toes to kind of splay out once they hit the ground. And they have three different kinds of foot shapes which is what Ultra calls them. They have the original, which is the widest standard, which is the one we're taking a look at today here on the Provision 7, which hasn't changed from the Provision 6. It's still that standard foot shape. And then they have the slim shape, which is found more on their racing shoes. And as far as the stats go, it's 28 millimeters in the heel, 28 in the forefoot for a zero drop. And just like last year, same exact setup, same exact stack height. However, what did change between the Provision 6 and the Provision 7 is the weight. So the 6 weighed, I believe, 10.1 ounces, while the 7 comes in at 9.6 so we come down about half an ounce with uh, the update here from the 6 to the 7. And we'll actually bring in the Paradigm as well as it's basically the beefed up version of the Provision. So the Paradigm has 30 millimeters in the heel and forefoot which is two more millimeters of cushion and it comes in a little bit heavier at 10.8 ounces again compared to the 10.6 here with the Provision 7. So you get a little bit more weight here and a little bit more uh, midsole as well. The midsole on the Paradigm is also Ego Max which is going to be softer and bouncier compared to the Ego Foam here on the Provision. And speaking of the midsole we'll compare them as they are pretty much the exact same now it's still ego foam which kind of falls into the lineup of ultras foam so you have ego foam what we're taking a look at today you have ego max which we see here on the paradigm a little bit softer a little bit bouncier and then you have ego pro which you see on like the vanish carbon which is their bounciest and most energetic foam so it kind of gets progressively bouncier uh, or more energized as you go up the scale so the ego foam here it provides a nice level of cushion but isn't as bouncy or as soft as some of their uh, more scaled up Foam. So I think this works well on a stability shoe because you don't want too much squish or softness and because the guide rails here aren't too massive, um, it's good to have a, a slightly more firm experience even though it does give you a nice level of cushion. It's just not super bouncy. There's not a ton of energy return here. Now I mentioned guide rails. Guide rails are essentially these walls of foam on the medial side. You kind of have them on the lateral side. Your foot kind of sinks down a little bit lower here. It's just not as pronounced as we see like with like the Paradigm and other guide rail systems. So there is a noticeable guide rail here towards the back part of the medial side and kind of a mini one on the lateral side as your foot sinks down into that ego foam. It really does kind of cradle your foot. Now what's nice about guide rails is they really don't impact your motion unless you kind of hit or run into them. So it's not like a posting mechanism. There's no dual density foams here. It's a very consistent feel and then you just kind of have the, those walls of foam that give you guidance towards the back half of the shoe if you need it, which I quite like. Moving on to the outsole, it's exactly the same from the six to the seven. The pattern is identical. Now it's a unique outsole because you have a ton of rubber coverage here uh, with these small individual lugs, which give you great grip and excellent durability. Now, as far as the downsides go, this outsole does make a ton of noise on the ground just because these individual little lugs hit against each other and kind of have a unique sound um, on certain surfaces. So it's a very loud shoe because of this outsole and uh, little rocks and debris love to get stuck in all these little nooks and crannies. So that is a 
negative, you will have to kind of pick out rocks every now and then. But durability traction, I thought was superb. The other interesting thing that Ultra does with their outsoles is they have something called IntraFlex, which is, you can see here, it's supposed to have these different lines that correspond to the bones and tendons in your foot. And I don't know if that's absolutely the case, just because you have quite a bit of foam here and it, it you know, moves like a regular shoe, but I don't think it's anything that, you know, different compared to other outsoles, at least I didn't notice a massive difference. So kind of a little bit of a marketing thing going on there, but I think the outsole here works very well and has a great grip. Moving on to the upper, this is where all the changes took place and they are quite noticeable and brought the shoe down almost half an ounce. Now the first thing is the toe box. They made the material a little bit less flimsy so they pulled it across a little bit more tightly. So if you take a look and compare the two between the six and the seven, you can see the material in the toe box is a little bit more flimsy. Breathability, still engineer mesh, thought it was about the same. The other big change they did was the heel counter. They made it a little bit more narrow here on the seven, more like a V-shaped. They did the same thing on the torn six, which is over there in the corner, to try to give you a better fit. Now I thought the fit on the six was quite good i was quite happy with it but it's going to be a more snug experience here with the seven kind of across the whole platform they just kind of brought the upper in just a tad bit more it's not a massive change but it is going to be a slightly more secured experience compared to the six the other interesting thing is on the six they had this piece of material that kind of wraps around the medial side of your foot it's supposed to give you a little bit more support personally didn't notice it didn't use it didn't want it and i think ultra kind of solved that as well and they just took it out so there's no more medial strap like we saw on the six and now it's just kind of your typical engineer mesh kind of a two-layered approach here engineer mesh towards the front half and a kind of a more synthetic material towards the back half now as far as the heel counter goes it's still kind of the same level of resistance it's just going to be a little bit more narrow and a little bit more pared down as it was quite tall on the paradigm six the or sorry provision six uh, the other thing is the tongue tongue is still non gusseted but has been brought back in a little bit more it was incredibly tall and just wide on the six and now is going to be a little bit uh, less cumbersome here on the seven as it has about the same amount of padding however they did add these large holes throughout the tongue for additional ventilation uh, and just brought it in a little bit more so it's less tall less annoying and i think it works quite well with roughly the same amount of padding the lacing system was also updated. They did remove one lace slot with six different holes for whatever lacing setup you would like. They also changed the type of laces. It's now kind of the more traditional, slightly rounded ones, while previously it was that fabric flat lace setup. So I thought the lockdown was great here on the seven. It fits true to size, slightly more snug uh, in the back half of the shoe and a slightly less voluminous forefoot just because there's a little bit less material there. But overall, I don't wouldn't make any size adjustments. It just fits the same, just a little bit more snug compared to the previous version, which I was quite happy with with that lockdown and fit. I was actually quite happy to see them reduce the tongue and kind of take away some of the meaningless pieces like that medial side strap. So the shoe lost almost half an ounce. And I think I know for a fact that all that came from the upper since the midsole is the same. And we can see that here with how they changed the setup. So at the end of the day, the Provision 7 is identical to the 6 with regard to the ride as the midsole and outsole is exactly the same. However, the upper experience has changed quite a bit as we do get a more narrow heel counter, uh, a little bit more pared down as well. It's not as tall as the Provision 6. We also have less volume to the upper as it's a little bit more supported and not as floppy uh, compared to the previous version. They also removed some pointless pieces like that medial strap we saw here on the 6. They took away an extra lace slot, did change the laces and made the tongue less bulky and cumbersome, which I was quite happy to see because that was one of my biggest complaints on the Provision 6. The only thing I'll say is too, is if you're someone who wants a softer experience, you can also take a look at the Paradigm. And we'll kind of bring that in as well as it does have a couple more millimeters of stack height and the Ego Max foam, which I find to be much softer and bouncier. It does provide a much more, I guess, a luxury, luxurious experience. Now with that more soft, more plush ride, you do give up some of the vers versatility that I think the provision gives you where you can kind of weight lift in the shoe, play sports in the shoe, walk in the shoe, hike in the shoe, and run in the shoe. Well, I probably wouldn't do that in the Paradigm. So that is something to keep in mind. It's also a little bit of a bulkier shoe and much heavier, I think almost like a full ounce heavier compared to this new provision. So it's kind of confusing. I may have mixed it up in this video. This is the provision, this is the paradigm, um, but essentially this is the bigger, bulkier stability version of the provision. So that's something I would probably try to keep in mind when trying to pick out which ultra shoe is right for you. But I am quite a fan of using ultra shoes for my casual and just kind of all around use because I love the zero drop and wide toe box and it works really well for me um, outside of just pure running so if you're someone who might not be a full-on runner and you want one shoe to kind of do it all I would take a good look at the provision 7 as it does a good job of kind of handling a wide range of activities in a very stable and responsible way um, the one big caveat like I mentioned before it's just not a 
as soft or as plush as the Paradigm. So if you want a little bit more of a plush, more luxurious ride, go with the Paradigm. If you want something a little more stable, a little more versatile, go with the Provision. So let me know down in the comments, what do you think of Ultra in general? And what do you think of this new update? I would love to hear from you. Well, I'm Ryan from Ryan's Running Reviews and I'll catch you guys on the next one. Thanks.